My name is Dustin Black, and as a part of Clemson Sports Media, we're going to be doing a film breakdown series of Clemson and their 2023 opponents. Today, we're doing a review of the Florida State game. All right, so I don't think it's going to be much of a surprise to most Clemson fans, but the one thing that's really holding this offense back right now is the perimeter blocking by the wide receivers. So this was actually a play call that was called on second and 25, and it actually is a great play call. Now, I know that most people don't want to see your quarterback throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage on second and 25, but this play should have gone for a lot more than 18 yards. Once you see this play develop, um, Cade's going to get this ball out to whip Will Shipley in space. And you got a great situation out here. You got Blake Miller, your right tackle. He's out in space. Um, you got Bo Collins to the perimeter blocking his cornerback. And then you got your running back one on one with the safety. Um, you, like, you like Will Shipley one on one with the safety in most situations. But what happens here? is, you know, the, the wide receiver, number 80, Bo Collins, is just not able to hold on to his guy long enough. He breaks free, and then Shipley has to, you know, dodge him, and it, it gives everyone time to rally to the ball. So that's just one little play right there that, you know, 18 yards is great. You know, it's a, it's a great pickup on second and 25 and gets you to third manageable. But this is a play that could have gone for 40, 50, you know, even a touchdown if, if Shipley is fast enough and, and able to make that safety miss. So that's just it's just those little things that are that are so close for Clemson's offense. I mean, I think the the offense had a great day on Saturday, but it could have been so much better. And it's just the little details like this that really need to come along. And then, you know, another thing is is a lot of stuff with this Garrett Riley offense is timing. Well, number seventy seven, Mitchell May is the right guard. I mean, he almost completely destroys this play just by letting the guy run completely by him. I mean, there you go. He's already in the backfield. Shipley hasn't had a chance to get out to the flat. And Blake Miller hasn't come off his first block yet. So Mitchell Mays needs to do better there. Hold his guy for a little bit. I mean, it's not a long developing play. Um, so even just little things like that, that could have completely destroyed this, this entire play before it even started. So that's something going forward that's going to have to change, you know, um, up front in the perimeter. Uh, it's so important to get these blocks, you know, correctly and and really just if we're going to get our playmakers out in space, you know, the rest of the guys have to do their job well enough to to where um, the guy who has the ball in his hands can be as effective as possible. And and being explosive in this offense isn't all about throwing the ball 40 yards down the field. It's about plays like this being executed perfectly and and allowing your um, your running back to get the ball in space and turn up field. And if he has one guy to beat, you know, you like your odds with that. So something's going to have to change going forward. and really looking for someone in this offense to step up and, and really take over that role of being the dominant perimeter blocker. So this is one of my favorite plays from Saturday. I thought this was a really cool design. I thought this was a really good way of getting Brinningstool matched up and, and really take advantage. You know, if, if Brinningstool is going to get matched up with a defensive end who's much slower than him, um, or even like if he's going to get guarded by a nickel corner or a slot corner or something of that nature who's way smaller than him, and we got to be able to identify those mismatches and, and, and use that to our advantage. And, you know, props to Garrett Riley for dialing this up and, and props to Cade for recognizing the mismatch pretty early on in the play. So Bringstool gets motioned over. Um, and as soon as Bringstool breaks this route, this defensive end seems like he's in man coverage, right? Well, Cade's got his eyes in the middle of the field. Well, quickly he scans back to the right and notices that mismatch. So right here is where he identifies, you know, who's covering Bringstool. And he gives it another half second. He delivers a nice ball, hits Brinningstool in stride, and Brinningstool's able to turn up field. And that's a great play. I mean, I, I, I really think that this is the way to use Brinningstool. I love him over the middle of the field. Um, if he's going to be matched up on, you know, less athletic linebackers or, or, or smaller corners or even safeties for that matter. Um, but when it, whenever someone wants to guard him with the defensive end, I mean, you got to take advantage of that. That guy's not fast enough to keep up with Brinningstool. And that's his advantage. You know, he's big, he's athletic, and, um, you know, hiding him in the backfield, you know, like this, instead of, you know, flexing him out as a wide receiver is a really good use for him. I'm not saying he can't be a wide receiver and, and kind of be that oversized slot guy um, at times, but I think that this is a really good way to use him. I think this is a really good way to get him the ball, and I thought this is a really good play design. All right, so I thought Tyler Brown had a really good game on Saturday. Um, had a good game against FAU. Um, he gets banged up a little bit on this play, but ends up coming back. And I don't know what the extent of his injury is. I'm sure, you know, Dabo's going to say he's day-to-day. -day. Um, but I hope he's not injured too bad because this offense can really use him. And, and he's become kind of a staple in this in this Garrett Riley scheme. 
So what you're going to have is you're going to have a couple crossers across the middle. Um, Phil Moffa is going to sit. And then, you know, Cade throws his ball to Tyler Brown. And, yeah, you could say it could be a little bit better of a ball, but I'm not going to nitpick that too much. Um, the one thing I'm really excited for is, is the separation that Tyler Brown created. First of all, you know, we've been screaming for, you know, wide receivers that, cre- that can create separation. Um, so could it be a better ball? Yes. Um, but still a great throw, still a great play. Um, and, and a big play. I mean, that puts you inside the five-yard line, and Clemson ends up scoring a touchdown off of this. Um, so I thought it was a really good throw by Cade. I thought it was a really good um, sign that he can go through his progressions. If you watch this play, he's going to scan the field a little bit. So great footwork getting into his drop, and then he's he's looking at the left. Now he's actually you know kind of holding that safety a little bit, if, if we're being honest. So that safety to the field side is, is being held by Cade's eyes right now. And then Cade's going to snap his head back to the middle of the field, and he's ready to deliver this ball. I mean, that's just good timing, good rhythm. Um, the pass pro is good enough. I mean, you got um, you got Blake Miller getting beat right here. You got Tristan Lee about to be on his butt. Um, but they've done their job enough, and, and Cade's going to let this ball go, and there's going to be a big, big play out of it. So I thought that was a really big play on Saturday. I think Tyler Brown showing yet again that he's probably the best explosive pass play option in this offense. I mean, I think going forward, he's going to kind of be that – that Amari Rogers, that speedy slot guy that's going to be a deep threat as well. And and I can't wait to see what kind of career he has at Clemson because, you know, he's he's a true freshman. So he's four games in and, and already really shining in this offense and, and really already has a strong connection with Cade. All right, so this is a concern for me um, going forward, and it has been a concern. You know, when I watch Charleston Southern and Clemson play, you know, you, I know most – college football fans kind of think, you know, what can I learn from Clemson watching them play this FCS school? Well, one thing I learned is that uh, Charleston Southern was able to send the same blitz repeatedly and it never got adjusted and it never got picked up. And, and even Charleston Southern had, you know, free hits on Cade or, or free rushers. And, and that's a concern. I mean, it's not a recipe for success going forward. And, and we see it later on in this game, um, another five man pressure where guys running free and, I mean, it cost Clemson the game. I mean, that sack fumble completely changed the complexion of the game. And, and if that doesn't happen, you know, Clemson probably goes on to win the game. But this is a concern, something that needs to change. Um, you know, Florida State blitzed Clemson a lot in the second half, um, more so in the first half. Um, but these blitzes weren't sending, you know, six, seven guys. I mean, it's it's a five-man pressure. You have five offensive linemen. So that protection needs to be communicated better. And also, especially with our opponent this weekend, not to get too much into Syracuse, but Syracuse is really good at stunts and twists, and and they'll send five guys, but you don't know where the five guys are coming from. So, you know, if, if Clemson can't notice this pressure or or adjust their protection to account for this, it may be a long day on Saturday. Um, but this is one thing that's it's a huge concern for me going forward, and it's something I've seen on film. And, um, you know, you obviously never want free hits on your quarterback ever. Um, and Cade's just taking too many of them. Um, but it's a good play. I mean, Cade gets the ball out on time um, despite the protection, end up scoring a touchdown here. Um, but it's a concern. It's definitely something that needs to be, you know, fixed on film. Um, it needs to be communicated with whoever's setting the protection. And just something I'm going to be looking at going forward. It's just something to log in the back of your mind, you know, these these free blitzers running at our quarterback. and. And, you know, from the Charleston Southern game and from this game, it was the same area. It's that it's those, you know, inside boundary receiver or boundary corners or or, you know, these extra like nickelbacks and stuff like that. Um, but it's a problem. And um, I was hoping something that something that gets adjusted to and, and something that gets fixed. All right. So this is the play that really changed the game um, and really won it for Florida State. Um, like I said in the last clip, this is a very similar blitz to what they sent on the last drive. Uh, this is after a really long Moffa run. Now, I'm not so much to dish out blame for this as much as I am going to give credit for you know Florida State for designing this blitz because it, it's a really good blitz and it's a really good design. Um, it, it worked to their you know perfection. I mean, it was exactly how they drew it up. Now, that safety that's highlighted in white, um, it, it looks like cover two, like how they're set up now. It looks like they're going to play cover two um, with kind of match quarters, you know, on, on the wide receivers, but it's going to completely change post snap. So that safety highlighted in white is going to play cover one. Um, and then, you know, Kalen Deloach, this, this kind of weak side linebacker is going to 
going to be the one blitzing the quarterback, and then you know the safety is going to step up and be in man coverage. Um, so it's a good blitz. It's a great blitz design. Um, they're going to you know kind of stunt the line a little bit, um, and they're really going to free up this gap. And Clemson completely bites on it. Now I I getting from the presser that Moffa is supposed to pick this guy up, so maybe Moffa is the one to blame. Um, but you know, it, it's a tough look and it, it's another five man pressure. So it's another, you got five offensive linemen, you got five guys rushing. Um, you got two linemen blocking one guy and one guy running free, something that needs to be adjusted, something that needs to be fixed. Um, it's a recipe for disaster as we see here and just, just not a really good look at all. And it, it's tough, especially with how good of a game Cade had on, on Saturday um, for this to be, you know, the deciding factor in the game, it's it's tough to swallow. Um, it's something that, you know, I think almost as Clemson fans, we've become numb to this season, um, seeing the defense run the other way with the football in their hands. But um, it's it's not good, and it's something that that I, I'm looking for to get fixed, and and something that I really hope gets um, gets ironed out, you know, protection wise. But um, it, I, the other thing I want to point out with this play that no one's really talking about it is that this play is about to pop. Um, if you see Tyler Brown right there, I mean, he, he's about to separate from his receiver. So when Cade, you know, fumbles the ball, it's because he's getting ready to wind up and throw this ball to Tyler Brown. I'll show it to you from a different angle, but I think that this play could have gone, you know, possibly for a touchdown if this is just a little bit different. All right, so when I watch the play from this angle, I want you to really look at um, Cade's stripe on his helmet where he's looking. So whenever he is in this mesh point with Maffa, he's actually reading that defensive end. Now, it kind of baffles me that if he's reading that defensive end or, or looking that direction, that he doesn't see this linebacker coming downhill. Now, I'm not trying to dish blame on Cade, but you would just think that he'd be able to notice that this linebacker is in full pursuit and, and he's in full pass rush mode, you know. Um, but, you know, he, he just completely turns to the opposite side of the field you know, he's looking in the middle of the field now. Um, he sees Tyler Brown kind of separating a little bit. Keys on it. If you look at the stripe on his helmet, he's getting ready to release this ball. So he has confidence in Tyler Brown. He thinks he can get this ball down, you know, before the safety gets over there. Um, but he doesn't have time. He goes for, to wind it up, and that ball is out. So um, I'm not trying to dish off blame on this play, like I said before, but it seems like it has, you know, a little bit to go around and, and I just just hope it gets fixed going forward. Like I said, this weekend is is it could be a long day if if Clemson's not able to key on where the pressure's coming from because Syracuse likes to stunt and twist a lot. So if that's an issue that we've had with with Florida State and you know even Charleston Southern, um, it's it's a concern for me and and something that I'm definitely going to be looking for on Saturday and and for the rest of the season and. And let's hope that these running backs are become a little bit more bold in their pass protection and a little bit more solid in, in that aspect of their game.